This video is presented with the intent of further developing your understanding and application of ethical principles, legal obligations, and the relationship between healthcare professionals and their patients. Watch as we present a scenario about differing strategies for interacting with patients. Doctors Bentley, Cruz, and Godwin are attending a dental conference in Indiana. After a session on restoration methods is completed, the three colleagues start up a conversation about their own restoration preferences. You know, patients just don't leave my office anymore with metal in their mouths. I am over that posterior thing, that tooth-colored restorations can't withstand biting forces on the back teeth and are more likely to fracture the amalgam fillings. And I convince 100% of my patients to replace their amalgams, regardless of how much longer they might be serviceable. Really? When I give my patients a choice, everyone likes composites on the anteriors. But there's a pretty even split between amalgam and composite on the posteriors. I've never been able to convince myself that sound amalgams need replacing. Of course, I'll talk it over with patients who are convinced that amalgam is bad. And I guess I'd replace sound restorations if they absolutely insisted on it. But there's just no science that, that supports the view that amalgams pose any health risk. Look, you're knocking yourselves out trying to appeal to the upscale market or to patient interests. Amalgam has its place, and so does composite. We're the ones with the training to balance the aesthetic and functional considerations, not the patient. I just decide what the best dentistry is and then I do it. You can't just do what you think is best without disclosing to the patient the advantages and disadvantages of all the alternatives, including no treatment at all. Of course I can. Both amalgam and composite are proven techniques, so there's no requirement for informed consent. No one's ever complained. And most patients would have no idea what treatment is best for their situation. I sleep better knowing I've given the best care I'm capable of. And I have high efficiency with less talking. I agree with part of what you're saying, especially about knowing what's best for the patient. But I think you're really missing the point. Patients need to be educated on modern dentistry. You have to make them comfortable with newer materials and aesthetic considerations. You're going to be doing more dentistry since composites need to be replaced more often, so you really need to explain the advantages to the patient, especially since it's going to be more expensive. I guess you can say that I combine informed consent and patient education into the same presentation, even if I am only stressing the advantages of the two colored materials. You know, if my line, that's the quality I'd expect from my family, if, if that doesn't get them, then I, I tell them my office is amalgam free and then they get the point. So. What changes would you like to see in the approaches of each dentist? You may pause the video here and consider the options, or you may continue on to the next section. Here are some possibilities that may have occurred to you. Perhaps it would be beneficial to rate each possibility as absolutely, you are entirely in agreement, probably, you think it is a good idea, 50-50, you are not sure, doubtful, you don't think it is a good idea, or no way, you entirely disagree. You may pause the video after each possible solution to consider the implications of each option. Dr. Bentley is off base in offering only tooth colored restorations and is suggesting replacement of sound amalgams. Dr. Bentley is really selling perhaps unneeded dentistry while calling it patient education. Dr. Cruz is off base because he is involving patients in decisions they are not really qualified to judge. Dr. Cruz is carrying informed consent too far. It is not needed in this situation. Dr. Godwin is off base in grounding treatment decisions exclusively in terms of his own perception of the situation. Dr. Godwin is correct 
that informed consent is unnecessary in such cases. Now let us rate the importance of each of these contributing factors as you weigh what is important in your considerations. Rate each one as decisive, important, not clear, little importance, or irrelevant. These contributing factors are as follows. Patient autonomy. Patients have the ultimate say over their own care. Dentist autonomy. Dentists must be allowed to practice as they think best. When patients question dentists, it damages the professional relationship. Dentists should only offer the most aesthetic and expensive care. A dentist's comfort level talking about alternatives and costs with patients. Whether the patient seems intelligent and to value high-end care. The amount of experience a dentist has with the procedures. Many dental practitioners face ethical dilemmas such as this one on any given day, anticipating how you might deliberate to find a suitable resolution to any such dilemma is good preparation and can aid each practitioner to find their way out of the challenging questions they sometimes must face.